Good afternoon to all IPMA members across Nigeria. This is the registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, IPMA, in collaboration with the African Institute of Strategic Managers. We understand that there is a serious pandemic going on across the world. Many are dying and many are suffering. And this uh, disease is contagious. That is why government of most nations have locked down their borders, boundaries, and uh, every other thing that has to stop uh, this virus. Nigeria is not an exception. COVID-19 is real. Many are dying. Most of us are at home, except those on essential services. We have uh, decided to keep you busy by presenting uh, this seminar to all our members across Nigeria and beyond. And the theme of uh, this presentation is achieving leadership excellence. But before going into the theme of uh, this presentation, I would like us to understand what coronavirus is. This sickness has claimed more than 106,000 lives and infected more than 1.7 million people around the world. Among them is UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who just recovered and tested negative yesterday. He was in hospital for about a week now, and so many other people are dying as we are talking. Coronavirus infects the lungs. The two main symptoms are fever and dry cough, which can sometimes lead to breathing problems. The cough to look out for is a new continuous cough. This means coughing a lot for more than an hour or having three or more coughing episodes in 24 hours. If you usually have a cough, it may be worse than usual. You have a fever if your temperature is above 37.8 C. This can make you feel warm, cold, or shivery. A sore throat, headache, and diarrhea have also been reported, and the loss of smell and taste may also be a symptom. It takes five days on average to start showing symptoms, but some people will get them much later. The World Health Organization says the incubation period lasts up to 14 days. Members, watch out for the symptoms of uh, this COVID-19. Reported illness have ranged from mild symptoms to severe illness and death for confirmed coronavirus disease, COVID-19. The symptoms may appear between 2 to 14 days after exposure, based on uh, the incubation period. Here are the symptoms, fever, cough, and shortness of uh, breath. My brothers and sisters, this sickness is contagious. The best way out of it is to Avoid the gathering of people. Do what uh, the term social distancing. If possible, stay in your house. That is the best way to kill this uh, COVID-19. 
and I pray that uh, we are on top of our game. So this method we are using today in presenting this paper is uh, the virtual classroom system. In Nigeria, we have been faced with, uh, used to, they face me, I face you, go to the classroom and uh, receive your lectures, or go to the uh, hall to, uh, for, for seminars to be presented, but now the whole world has changed. Before now, most countries, the civilized world, you go there, you attend uh, those doing their masters and PhDs, use this uh, medium, the virtual platform, which uh, you receive lectures anywhere you are in the world. But uh, now that uh, COVID-19 is ravaging, we in the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria have decided to use this platform also to reach our members across the globe. The virtual classroom system, for your information, is an online classroom that allows participants to communicate with one another, view videos or presentations, interact with fellow participants, as well as engage with the resources in work groups. You can call it a digital replica of a conventional classroom, or say a training room. Here the trainers teach and the students learn face-to-face -face in real time. However, they are digitally enabled technology devices. What remains intact is a classroom whiteboard, which is usually found in every classroom or meeting room. For a storming session, discussions and ideations occur in real time. Besides, the usual test takes place before and post the teaching session. Students receive the report right after the session, hence there is no such chance for students as well as the trainer. And the only visible difference is that the digital classroom uses technology in order to support learning and instructions. The benefits are immense, as the flexibility is more as compared to a traditional classroom. Like one get to connect and teach geographically, spread audience all at one time. Moreover, a digital classroom has small communication tools integrated, such as in app chat, in app calling, open discussion board, multimedia content, posts, and social media. Brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the live session of this presentation. The team is uh, achieving leadership success, which will be presented by my humble self, the registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, Dr. Abdullahi Gibril Salim. Let us uh, go straight and do the presentation, since uh, I don't want to take much of your time. At least as professional managers, we cannot uh, control the storm, but we can build ship that will navigate through the storm. We are the hub that rules the way, and without us, all other managerial functions are useless. So without taking much of your time, let me come straight home and uh, do justice to the paper the theme of this uh, presentation. The preamble, leadership is an important element of directing functions of management wherever there is an organized group of people working towards a common goal. Some type of leadership becomes essential 
The power of leadership is the power of integrating. The leader stimulates what is best in us. He unites and concentrates what we feel only groppingly and shatteringly. The person who influences me most is not he who does great deeds, but he who makes me feel that I can do great deeds. That is uh, according to Mary Parker Follett. That's it. He that makes you to feel that you can do it, that is uh, the person who influences you most. Leadership is the ability to build up confidence and zeal among people, to create an urge in them to be led. To be a successful leader, a manager must possess, possess the qualities of foresight. You must stay into the future. You have to be creative. You must have, uh, you must be pushful. You must have self-confidence and personal uh, integrity. If your yes is yes, let your yes be yes. Don't be the type that uh, sit on the fence. Different situations may demand different types of leadership. Let us go straight to the point and ask ourselves what is leadership. Here we have uh, the definitions as given by many of our scholars. Leadership has been defined in various ways. We have that of stock deal, which rightly remarked that there are almost as many definitions of leadership as there are people who have tried to define it. From the different definitions now, we have the first, which is uh, Kunz and O'Donnell. Leadership is the ability of a manager to induce subordinates to work with confidence and zeal. When you induce your subordinates to work with confidence with their head up and zeal, the zeal to deliver, it shows how good you are as a leader. You should be able to induce subordinates. Make sure that the job that is given to them, resources are also allocated to make sure that uh, the jobs and uh, the resources are in parity with the job that is to be accomplished. The second definition, according to Dubin R, leadership is an exercise of authority and making of decisions. You must stand your feet and say this is what you want. If you are able to exercise your authority in such a way that uh, your followers will be induced to do what is doable and uh, you take decisions that will stand the test of time. It shows that you are a good leader. Alford and Beatty. Leadership is the ability to secure desirable action from a group of followers voluntarily without the use of coercion. Voluntarily. When you make people to do things voluntarily, without forcing them, without pushing them to do it, they are happy doing it. It shows that you are a leader. Make your subordinates to do desirable actions voluntarily without the use of force. The fourth definition here is by George R. Terry, who believes that leadership is the activity of influencing people to strive willingly for group objectives. When people come together to strive willingly Strive willingly without the use of force for achieving the superordinate goals of the organization. It shows that uh, you are a good leader. Anfield JK Leadership is the initiation of acts which result in a consistent pattern of group interaction directed towards the solution of mutual problems. When people come together, they initiate actions and uh, ensures that uh, the mutual uh, problem are taking mutual problems are taken care of. It shows that uh, leadership has taken place. James J. Creepy. Leadership is a process of influence on a group in a particular situation at a given point of time. At a given point of time, 
you are able to influence your subordinates to do the right thing, it shows that you are a leader. And in a specific set of circumstances that stimulate people to strive willingly to attain organizational objectives and satisfaction with the type of leadership provided. Wow, we have the famous uh, Peter Drucker. That is a profounder of uh, MPO, Management by Objective, which also begets Management by object Permitment. Let's see what he has to say about leadership. According to Peter Drucker, leadership is not making friends and influencing people. That is salesmanship. It is a lifting of man's vision to higher side. Lifting of man's vision to higher side. Make him see the unknown. Make him see and do what he believes that is not possible. And uh, if you are the type that is able to bring out the good potentials in your subordinate, it shows that you are a leader. The raising of man's personality beyond its normal limitations. Push them beyond their normal limitations and they will be willing to achieve uh, results with you. It shows how great you are as a leader. In the various definitions of leadership, the emphasis is on the capacity of an individual to influence and direct group efforts towards the achievement of organizational goals. Thus, we can say that leadership is a practice of influence that stimulates subordinates. When you influence your subordinates and they are stimulated to do what you think what they think that is not feasible, it shows that you are a leader. Our followers will do their best towards the achievement of desired goals. Nature and characteristics of uh, leadership. Before we move to the nature, at least we have seen the definitions given by the different uh, scholars. I believe uh, we can now have a clearer picture of what uh, leadership is. As professional managers, it will do us good, now that uh, we are in uh, a lockdown, to go through this and reflect, to see how we can uh, move our organization to the next level by the time we are finally back to the office. Some of you are working from homes, and uh, I believe uh, you are already thinking, see how you can carry your subordinate uh, along. See how you, ma you can make them to achieve uh, the desired goals without using force or coercion. Make them to do it willingly and uh, they will be happy to do it. If you are giving somebody a task to achieve, you make sure that uh, that task is specific. It is measurable. It is achievable. It has a time bound which can be evaluated and reviewed. That is in line with the SMART or SMARTER acronyms. Make sure that uh, you put the right, uh, the, the right, uh, the, the, you, you make sure that uh, you, you, you put the, the right pegs. Uh, the, it's like putting a round pegs in a round holes and a square pegs in a square holes. So we'll now move to the nature and characteristics of leadership. An analysis of the definitions cited above reveals the following important characteristics of leadership. Leadership is a personal quality. You can see that. It's a personal quality. It is something that uh, you build over time. You build over time. You assume the position of leadership. You work under a superior. Because for you to become a good leader, you must have been a good follower. It is not uh, by magic. You have to build that quality. See how you can make people do things without uh, the use of force. It exists only with followers, yes. Leadership exists only with followers. You are the leader. Without the followers, there can be no leadership. If there are no followers, there is no leadership. You can see that uh, for you to be a leader, there must be followers. It is the willingness of people to follow that makes a person a leader. If people are not willing to follow you, you are not a leader. You cannot force people to follow you. What becomes of the organization? When you break down, or you are no longer in the organization, you make people do things willingly, and so that uh, they will be happy doing it, 
and they will also aspire to be in your position when you are no longer in that organization. It brings about succession planning. Effective, you delegate to them, and uh, they are happy doing the job, because when you delegate to a subordinate, that subordinate will believe that you will be happy. But in management, we don't delegate our total managerial functions. Delegate to subordinate, and make sure you follow up to see that uh, they are doing the right things. Because when you delegate your total managerial functions, such subordinate might feel too indispensable in that organization, and the rest will be history. You delegate and follow up, understand what they are doing, motivate them also, so that uh, these people can, uh, will they, as they are working, they will be aspiring to be in your position when you are no longer in that organization. Leadership is a process of influence. A leader must be able to influence the behavior, attitude, and beliefs of his subordinate. Yes, what they are telling us here, you influence them. Make them change their decisions. What they believe that uh, is not feasible, make, it, uh, make them know that it is possible. Tell them that uh, impossibilities are possible. You can, uh, you can, you can change the world if you, will, if you, if you are ready to do that. A leader must be able to influence their behavior, change their behavior, their attitude, their ways of doing things, and beliefs of his subordinate. You groom them. You have your own team. As you are moving up the ladder, you are also growing with them, and the subordinate goals of the organization is achieved. Leadership exists only for the realization of common goals. You come together to achieving a super, the superordinate goals of your organization. You have a common goal. If our common goal is to eradicate COVID-19, uh, so be it. We will all work towards uh, eradicating it without uh, using force on uh, the subordinate. Because without uh, the followers, you cannot claim to be a leader. It involves readiness to accept complete responsibility in all situations. As a leader, accept responsibility in all situations. If your followers or your subordinates have erred in any aspect, don't put the blame on them. Accept, take responsibility. Tell them you are in charge and these people will be happy. They will work as if there will be no tomorrow. They will make you achieving, they, they, they will be happy, and uh, the organizational goals will be achieved. Leadership is a function of stimulating the followers to strive willingly to attain organizational objectives. You stimulate them. Give them uh, what they need to achieving results. The eighth point here is leadership size do change under different circumstances. Yeah, we have uh, with the leadership styles. You can decide to use be autocratic. You can decide to be, be uh, use a participative style, and you can decide to use uh, the less affair approach. The less affair approach is not practiced in this part of the world. When you do try that, you are on your own because you don't ask people to go and do something, and you are not yet to see what they are doing. Then uh, if you decide to go that way, then your name is sorry. Then the participative side also is uh, under that, we can get that of uh, MPO, Management by Objective. That is when you see that everyone in the organization is important. You bring them together to decide how the organization should, uh, should, 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 how the organization should be. You interpret the mission and the vision statement of uh, the organization to them. And by so doing, uh, when they notice that uh, every one of them is part of uh, the decision making of the organization, they will start working like an idiot. They will work as if there will be no tomorrow. Everybody will be happy doing the work. One thing you should understand is that uh, as a professional manager, have it at the back of your mind that uh, once uh, every, everyone in the organization is important, from the cleaners up to the managing directors, the board of directors are all important. If the cleaner refuses to clean your table, how conducive will it be for you to perform in the office? If the environment is dirty, how realistic will the, the super the ordinate goals of the organization be? 
there will be confusion. You have to stay more, well, the, you, you must make sure that uh, the approach you use uh, it should be based on uh, the circumstances. The participating style, uh, which is a uh, biggest MBO, management by objectives, and management by objectives, biggest management by commitment. By the time you everyone sees that uh, they are important in the organization, they will come together and work as if there will be no tomorrow, and the superordinary goals of the organization will be achieved. The other one, which is the autocratic style, the autocratic leader is not uh, interested in uh, the process, but the outcome. That is when one is using a Machiavellian approach. He will tell you, go ahead and do this job. How you go about doing that job is not his headache. There was a time I asked, uh, we treated the case study somewhere, and uh, the equation was thrown at us that what's uh, best, what style of uh, leadership is best to be used in an organization. And uh, many people were shying away from the truth. They told us that uh, the best style to use then was that of uh, participative, which is delegative. But the truth is that uh, a good leader has to be a situational leader. The style should be, should be situational. If you have enough time to play with, nobody's on your neck, you have no deadline to crack, then uh, you use a, a participative style. That is when you ask everybody on the, in the organization what uh, they think about uh, what is to be done. But the situation where you have no time, there is a deadline, you have to crack. But the board of directors on your neck, are you going to use a participative style? No. That is when uh, the best style to use is that of an uh, autocratic. You have been working with the subordinate for years. You have known uh, their competence level. You have known uh, their, how exposed they are and uh, their experiences too. Then uh, by so doing, you should be able to uh, use uh, a, a, an autocratic style. That is when you are no, you should no longer be interested in the process, but uh, the outcome. That is when you come to the office in the morning, somebody will ask you, greet you good morning. You ask them what is good about the money, because you are not here to smile. What you are here to, uh, to see is the result, outcome. And here they are telling us that uh, leadership styles do change under different circumstances. Yes, it is, uh, it is in order. The ninth point, leadership is neither positive nor synonymous with management. Let us move to, at least with this point, they've at least highlighted what uh, we should do to become a, a good leader. Then uh, they are trying to tell us here now that we have uh, formal and informal leaders. From the viewpoint of official recognition from top management, leaders may be classified as formal and informal leaders. A formal leader is one who is formally appointed or elected to direct and control the activities of the subordinate. When you are elected or you are appointed to direct and control activities of, uh, with, uh, of uh, the subordinate, it shows that you are a leader. You are a formal leader. A formal leader is the type that is elected or appointed. Just like President Buhari now is a former leader. The Senate President is a former leader. The House of uh, Rep Speaker is a former leader. Then uh, we have all the governors of uh, leaders because they are appointed and uh, to supersede and uh, oversee activities of people. He is a person created by the former structure enjoys organizational authority and is accountable to those who have elected him in a formal way. The former leader has a twofold responsibility. On the one hand, he has to fulfill the demands of the organization, while on the other, he is also supposed to help, guide, and direct his subordinates in satisfying their needs and aspirations. You can see that uh, as a former leader, 
you have a twofold responsibility. By ensuring that uh, the job you are appointed to achieve is achieved. And on the other hand, to see that uh, the people under you are happy. And that will make them to do the job voluntarily without uh, forcing them to do it. Informal leaders are not formally recognized. They derive authority from the people who are under their influence. In an organization, we can always find some persons who command respect and who are approached to help guide and protect the informal leaders. Have only one task to perform. Help their followers in achieving their individual and group goals. Informal leaders are created to satisfy those needs which are not satisfied by the formal leaders. An organization can make effective use of informal leaders to strengthen the formal leadership. That is uh, informal leaders, those that will be used to achieve a particular goal, those that uh, will be used to strengthen the formal leadership, leadership functions. The following are important uh, functions of a leader. The first is setting goals. A leader is expected to perform creative functions of laying out goals and policies to persuade the subordinate to work with zeal and confidence. It is very clear. As a leader, you are expected to perform creative functions, bringing new ideas. Just like uh, this idea now, well, that uh, well, the virtual idea we are coming up with now. Subordinate, persuade the subordinate to work with zeal and confidence. You come up with ideas, you support your subordinate, give them the confidence, you train them on how to we meet up uh, with the new uh, the new things that has to be done. Organizing. The second function of a leader is to create and shape the organization on scientific lines by assigning roles appropriate to individual abilities with a view to make its various components to operate sensitively towards the achievement of enterprise goals. The third point here, initiating action. The next function of a leader is to make, is to take the initiative in all matters of interest to the group. It should not depend upon others for decision and judgment. It should float new ideas and its decisions to reflect original thinking. It has to be a conceptual thinker. As a leader, you must always think outside the box. If possible, shatter the box to bring out a uh, to bring up policies that will stand the test of time. And whatever action you are coming up with must be in line with the smart or smarter acronym so that subordinates will not be found wanting in uh, achieving the superordinate goals of the organization. The action you must initiate, which has to be accomplished, must be specific, it must be measurable, it must have a time bound, it must be achievable, it must be realistic, which can be evaluated and reviewed. Coordination. A leader has to reconcile the interests of the individual members of the group with that of the organization. You reconcile the interests of individual members of the group with that of the organization. Make sure that their personal goals are achieved. By so doing, the organizational goals will be enhanced. To whom much is expected, much is given. Give them the necessary materials, things that will make them to perform optimally. Coordinate them in such a way that uh, they, will, they, they will do the job voluntarily. and to ensure voluntary cooperation from the group 
in realizing the common objectives. Their individual uh, goals and the corporate uh, goals to be taken care of. Direction and motivation. It is a primary function of a leader to guide and direct his group and motivate people to do their best in the achievement of desired goals. He should build up confidence and zeal in the work group. Link between management and workers. A leader works as a necessary link between man the management and the workers. You have to be the middleman between the management and the workers to bring uh, the policies from uh, the upper echelons of the organization to the workers and also communicate the grievances of the workers to the upper echelons by so doing to have a balanced uh, platform. Also interpret the policies and programs of the management to your subordinate and represent the subordinate interest before the management. You cannot tell the management that uh, to whom much is uh, expected, much is given. Because in every business, in every organization, we have what we call stakeholders. The employees are stakeholders too in the business for their salaries, wages, and other personal costs. See how you can improve on them. Make them happy. And uh, they will be ready to perform optimally without coercing them. Qualities of a good leader. A successful leader secures desired behavior from his followers. It depends upon the quality of leadership is able to provide a leader to be effective must possess certain basic qualities. A number of authors have mentioned different qualities which is a person which a person should possess to be a good leader. Some of the qualities of a good leader are as follows good personality. It must be somebody of good character. If your yes is yes, your yes should be yes. Now when you tell people, you use an ambiguous language, they may not even understand the angle you are coming from. You are somebody that uh, likes playing balls. You become, uh, you use a maradonic approach. It shows that uh, you are not a good person. And by so doing, people will not take you, they will, they will, not, they will take you for granted. Most of them will not uh, perform optimally. They will not be ready to, uh, to do what is doable voluntarily. Emotional stability. Be focused. Be stable in your dealings with your subordinates. Sound education and professional competence. You must be knowledgeable in the areas. If you are telling somebody to come and achieve a particular task, you should be ahead of uh, that person. Go into extensive research. Because as professional managers, we are like the hub that rules the way. Without us, all other managerial functions are useless. That is why we administer the six M's. The men, machines, money, materials, methods, and the market. Importance of leadership in management. You can see that the importance. Let us go straight to the point and leave the preambles. The importance of leadership can be highlighted from the following. It improves motivation and morale. You can see a good leader. For you to achieve a successful uh, outcome, you have to motivate your subordinates. Through dynamic leadership, managers can improve motivation and morale of their subordinates. A good leader influences the behavior of an individual in such a manner that he voluntarily works towards the achievement of enterprise goals. He motivates them and they will be ready to, to work for you. It acts as a motive power to group effort. Leadership serves as a motive power to group effort it leads the group to a higher level of performance 
through its persistent effort and impact on the human relation. It acts as an aid to authority. It is needed at all levels of management. It rectifies the imperfectness of the formal organizational relationships. It provides the basic basis for cooperation, process of uh, all techniques of effective leadership. Here are the followings. The leader should consult the group in framing the policies and lines of action and initiating any radical change theory. Always consult with the group. Whatever that comes up, consult with them. Who has together and the success will be achieved. He should attempt to develop voluntary cooperation from his subordinates in realizing common objectives. Make them do this voluntarily. If they are happy, you will be happy. Exercise authority whenever necessary to implement the policies. Give clear, complete, and intelligent instructions to subordinates. You should uh, also build up confidence and zeal in your followers. Listen to subordinate properly. A good leader should also be a good listener. Communicate effectively in the language that be understood. Also follow the principles of uh, motivation. Motivate them very well. And uh, everyone will be happy. Here now we have the 12 disciplines of powerful leadership which uh, a professional manager can use in uh, leading his or her organization to greatness. The discipline of leadership excellence. Go through that to understand that at your own time. The discipline of clarity. Make sure that uh, things are, uh, are, are, are not bogus. The discipline of control, there should be chain of control. People should be ready to take responsibility for their actions. A good leader, you take the responsibility of your followers. The discipline of character, don't compromise. Discipline of competence. Excellence and continuous learning. Keep on learning. Be ahead of your uh, subordinates. Discipline of uh, competitiveness. Knowing what customers want and putting them first can help create a competitive edge for the organization. Do what we call benchmarking. Things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. We're in a world of competition. Competitors are not sleeping until you are already sleeping. Don't go to bed until your competitors are sleeping. If you must sleep, sleep with one eye closed so that you will not be taken down away. You always do what you call benchmarking, things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. Discipline of creativity. Be creative. Go outside the box. Think outside the box. If possible, chatter the box. It's a discipline of courage. You must be a courageous leader. Believe that impossibilities are possible. Discipline of caring about people. Carry your people along. They do things, make sure that you give them incentives that will be in parity with the task to be accomplished. The discipline of change management is also there. Discipline of concentration. Concentrate. Don't be distracted in such a way that your competitors will take over you. Discipline of personal excellence is also there. Types of uh, leadership. Types of leadership is the next we have to look into. I believe that uh, with all we have done so far, as a good leader, you should be able to at least uh, do something that will stand the test of time.
what are the different types of leadership styles. We have covered 12 different styles, types of ways people tend to lead organizations or other people. Not all of these styles will fit every situation, but you can read them through to see which one fits your company. The first is autocratic leadership. We've treated that before. This is a, a leadership style where the leader is not interested in the process, but the outcome. Autocratic leadership style is centered on the law, on the boss. In this leadership, the leader holds all authority and responsibility. In this leadership, leader, leaders make decisions on their own without consulting anyone. They reach decisions, communicate them to subordinate, and expect prompt implementation. An autocratic work environment normally has little or no flexibility. It has to be rigid. The word is rigidity. That is, uh, is in line with uh, Masuever uh, principles of uh, uh, bureaucracy. An autocratic work environment normally has little or no flexibility. In this kind of leadership guidelines, Procedures and policies are all natural additions of an autocratic leader. Statistically, there are very few situations that can actually support autocratic leadership. Some of the leaders that display this kind of leadership include Albert J. Dunlap, Sunbeam Corporation, and the President Donald Trump, Trump Organization, among others. Steve Jobs is another leader who was famous for using fear to inspire people to get their work done. When you instill fear in people to get the work done, it shows that you are an autocratic leader. This leadership style can obviously stifle the leader's subordinate, but can only be useful in a crisis when important decisions need to be made without delay. That is when you have a, 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 a when you have a deadline to crack. Democratic leadership, that is the participative. In this leadership style, subordinates are involved in making decisions. That is where we, we got the MPO, which we got the uh, MBC, management by objective. Everybody should come together and make decisions that will stand the test of time. And by so doing, it is uh, management by commitment. Strategic uh, leadership style is the third. Strategic le leadership, is one that involves a leader who is essentially the head of a, an organization. The strategic leader is not limited to those at the top of the organization. This style is geared to a wider audience at all levels who want to create a high-performance life, team or organization. The strategic leader fills the gap between the need for new possibility and the need for practicality by providing a prescriptive set of habits. Effective strategic leadership delivers the goods in terms of what an organization naturally expects from its leadership in terms of change. 55% of this leadership normally involves strategic thinking. Always think outside the box. Transformational leadership. Transformational leadership is all about initiating change in organizations, groups, oneself, and others. Those that are Always think outside the box. They bring in new ideas and known as transformational uh, leaders. They motivate others to do more than they originally intended and often even more than they thought possible. When you start doing things that you thought was not possible, it shows that uh, your leader is uh, a transformational leader. William Ed Ed Edwards. Demi, a statistician and engineer, is a leader who saw the best way certain systems would operate and taught those under him how to accomplish these goals. Team leadership. You will know what team is when people come together to work for the actualization of the organizational goals. When you have such leader, that bring everybody together, involve everyone, Working with the hearts and minds of all those involved, it also recognizes that teamwork may not always involve trusting cooperative uh, relationship. The most challenging aspect of this leadership is whether or not 
it will succeed. So see what uh, Harvard uh, Business Review says about that. Cross-cultural leadership is also there. Go through that on your own. Facilitative leadership is there. The less affair, I also told you earlier that the less affair is not practiced in this part of uh, the world. Let's see what uh, they have to tell us about less affair. Less affair leadership gives authority to employees. According to our central department of subordinates, are allowed to work as they choose with minimal or no interference. Is that what we can do in Africa? The answer is a capital no. You cannot ask people to go with no interference. Now look at uh, the, what is happening. The president is like, uh, should, I, should he attribute this kind of uh, leadership style <laughs> to our president? Well, it is a case study. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> You can see that uh, people are doing whatever they like. They are doing uh, as, uh, as if they are magicians. So, and by so doing, they might not uh, represent him well. This kind of leadership has been consistently found to be the least satisfying and least effective management style. The transactional leadership is also here, which involves an exchange process whereby followers get immediate tangible rewards for carrying out the, uh, the, the leader's orders. Once you succeed, you will get something in return. That shows whichever leader that is always out to compensate you, to push you to do more, it shows that a, such leader is a transactional leader. Coaching leadership, we all know what coaching is. Bring them together, teach them what they don't know, and uh, they will start uh, uh, singing at the end of the day. I'm happy to do the job. Charismatic leadership, in this type of leadership, the charismatic leader manifests his or her revolutionary power. Charisma does not mean sheer behavioral change. It actually involves a transformation of followers, value and beliefs. Therefore, charismatic leaders are not merely a simple populist leaders who affect attitudes towards specific objectives. Rather, these leaders transform the underlying normative orientation that structures specific attitudes. Charismatic leaders tend to have powerful personalities and attract huge followings. Attract huge followings. They must have uh, powerful personalities and they are the types that also attract uh, huge followers. Examples of such leaders are, you can see that, Barack Obama and uh, Oprah Winfrey, visionary leader, a leader, the, a leader that has a vision, a leader that can tell you in 10, 20 years time, this is what we should do. We have such leaders in Africa, like that of uh, Nelson Mandela, and uh, we have uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They are the outstanding leaders who are ready to transform their visions into realities. Conclusion. Leadership and management are inseparable in nature. If there is management, there is leadership. Well, if there is management, there is leadership. Because it has to do with uh, followers. When management is when you bring two or more people to roll a stone, that shows that uh, you, by bringing two or more people and uh, the stone is rolled, it shows that you are a leader. They are inseparable. You can separate them. Leadership, management, they are one. They are together. In fact, the qualities of a manager require leadership skills. If you are not a good leader, you cannot be a, a good manager to inspire your subordinates. In an organization, you can see both management and leadership. There is a manager in a department and a number of uh, leaders who work with their teams in assisting the organization in the accomplishment of their goals. Many times, managers play the role of a leader too, at the demand of the organization, so they both go side by side as a complement, as a complement to each other. An organization is both for its growth and survival. You need a, a good manager and a, a good leader. You cannot be a good manager when uh, you are not a good leader. And you cannot be a good uh, leader when you cannot manage effectively. Management is all, is all about uh, the arrangement and maintenance of the five M's here. Here they are telling us about the five M's, the men, machines, money, 
materials, methods, and the market. We believe that uh, when the, the leader is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 when, when, the, when, the, when uh, the leader is, uh, is bad, it will be difficult to administer the aims. It will be di difficult to allocate the resources that are scarce, and uh, the rest could be stories. The five aims, the, the men you get the right people to do the right job, the machines should be in line with modern specifications, the money, uh, which answer right all things, is the life, it should be the life fire of the organization. Then the materials, also know the level, you are, the, the level of stock you are operating in your warehouse, is it at the reorder level, at the minimum level, or at the maximum level? You have to take note of that. Then uh, the methods also you are putting in place, and the market, see what uh, you can do. In the market that you are new, how do you go about uh, bulldozing everybody by telling them that uh, if not Panadol, it can be like a Panadol? Why leadership is about persuading people in the position, direction, for digging out talent in them. A good manager should be able to manage the five M's, and a good leader should be able to mold out uh, subordinates and uh, make sure that uh, the talent they believe that uh, uh, could not be achieved are achievable. Thank you all, and God bless. We thank God for coming to the end of uh, this uh, presentation. I believe uh, it's something that uh, we can uh, do better subsequently. This COVID-19 is not a death uh, certificate, it's not a license for us to go and die, but a means for greater heights. You can see that uh, with what we have done so far, it is possible because of uh, the, the ways of uh, We have, which uh, we have gone into extensive research. So the app we are using, I want every member of the institute to download the app. The name is Eastalks. Eastalks. E Z T A L K S. You download that. Go to Google uh, Store and download that on your system. To register with your email, activate from your, your email, then with that, you will, you will now meet for the question and answers. Here on that uh, platform, you can, uh, you are enabled once you log in and uh, you join uh, the meeting. I'm going to send you the, the, I'm going to send you the meeting IDs. By the time you get the meeting ID, Use that to join uh, the meeting, and uh, we'll all be seeing ourselves live, live and direct. And by so doing, we should be able to ask questions here from the paper presented so far. Anywhere you don't understand, you will let us know. Will let us brainstorm as families and the areas where you have uh, you want to you, you want to contribute. Then you contribute because normally. This should be an interactive session, and that is why we are going. Go, we, we, we are going to meet on. Uh, on uh, we are going to meet live and direct, so that uh, we can uh, interact. We can learn from one another. At least uh, those of you who cannot uh, uh, log in to join us, you can uh, call zero eight zero seven seven one five eight five. 76 to ask direct question or you give your uh, suggestions to or you can send it in a text message the number is 08077158576 let us have your suggestions your questions and uh, we'll meet live and direct and uh, the, we should be able to uh, analyze them one by one, because we will make it interactive so that uh, we we'll all contribute to what we are saying. Once you log on, you join, 
enable your video so that uh, we can uh, see you live and direct and uh, we can uh, say hi to one another also at least this uh, is just the beginning the sky will be our starting uh, uh, point not our limits because we believe that uh, we have to do what is uh, necessary now that uh, we cannot uh, meet one on one we cannot uh, do anything and uh, we really need to at least move on and uh, to to do our programs like in the month of may now we have uh, programs lined up like uh, that, the one of uh, seminars the comment workshop which we could not uh, do uh, that could not hold due to covid 19 will now be have, uh, will now be availed to all members after uh, in, uh, in the month of may we will send you text messages across in regards to that and uh, we believe that uh, we are going to do justice to that in a better way that uh, will stand the test of time. So do enjoy yourself and uh, stay out of uh, trouble. COVID-19 is real. Avoid the uh, crowds. Don't uh, you may always uh, social distance yourself if, you are, if, you, if it is important for you to go out and uh, use uh, uh, always wash your hands and uh, use sanitizer. The sanitizer you are using should be from a 70% uh, alcoholic content so that the virus can be killed. We over, uh, overtake, uh, with time, we, we are going to overcome uh, the COVID-19. And COVID-19 will soon be history. Thank you all, and uh, God bless you all.